Welcome back to another video. In my previous video, we looked at implementing supervised machine learning algorithm on the IRS dataset. In this video, we will look at implementing an unsupervised machine learning algorithm on the IRS dataset. Before moving forward, it would be highly appreciated if you could hit the like button, smash the subscribe button and turn on bell notification to stay updated. Stay tuned. So as always, first let's import the required libraries. Now we are importing pandas and numpy for basic data operations. Then we are importing matplotlib and cbond for plotting the data. Then we are importing train test split to split the data into training and testing sets. Then we are importing k-means to perform k-means clustering. Then we are importing sillout score to calculate the sillout score. Then we are importing warnings and filter warnings to ignore any warnings that might appear in our program. Now that we have imported all the required libraries, let's go ahead and import the required dataset. Now let's look at the available description of the dataset. Now this gives us some more detail about the data set. The next step is to convert the data into a pandas data frame. To do that, let's load the data. Iris data dot data. And let's add the column names. Now let's view the data frame using the head function. Now since this is an unsupervised algorithm, we will not be adding the target for. To find the size of the data set, we can use the shape attribute. Now let's use the info function to get some more information regarding the data set. And as we can see, the info function returns us the column names along with the number of non-null values and the data type. To view the statistical details of a data set, we can use a describe method. So this gives us the count, the min, max, mean and standard deviation of a data. Now let's visualize the data using a pair plot. See bonds pair plot. And let's pass in the data and I'm setting the markers as plus signs. So from this we can see that the petal length and the petal width are highly correlated. Now speaking of correlation, we can use a heat map to find the correlation between different attributes. The annotation is being set to true to see the correlated values inside the heat map. So from the following heat map, we can see that the petal width has a high correlation with the petal length. We can also visualize the data points using a scatter plot. Let's say the kind of plot as scatter.
So now this is a simple scatter plot showing all the data points. Now let's look at implementing k means clustering on the given data set. To find the optimum number of clusters, we can use the elbow method and the sillout method. Let's start with the elbow method. For the elbow method, what we are doing is we are running k means clustering on a data set for a given range of values starting from one cluster and then calculating the sum of square distances for these clusters. Now let's initialize an empty array to store the sum of squares. So I'm initializing WSS which indicates within cluster sum of squares and as we are trying to find the clusters in range 1 to 10 I am setting the range accordingly so the number of clusters will be i as it has to search from 1 to 10 clusters And I'm setting the initialization method as k means plus plus as it selects the initial clusters in a faster way so as to speed up the convergence. And I'm setting a random state. Now let's fit the data and let's append the WSS. When we look at the graph, we can see that the elbow or the point afterwards, there is no much change in the value of summer squared, which in this case is 3. Now let's find the number of clusters using the sillout method. So first we'll find the sillout score for the different clusters. For i in range 2 to 10. This is because the range for sillout method starts from 2. So as earlier the number of clusters will be i and the maximum iteration is being set to 100. Now let's fit the data and let's calculate the sellout score. Now let's print the score for each cluster. Now I am ignoring the first value and then taking the next highest score which in this case is 3. So now let's plot a graph for the sellout values. So I am assigning an empty array first. So here we are calculating the sellout coefficient and plotting it and then we are setting the range for x axis and then we are setting the x label and y label and as we can see from the graph the line starts at 2 and I am taking the next best value which is 3. Now that we have got the number of clusters there is one more thing to do before training the model that is to standardize the data. So to standardize the data we are going to use standard scalar. So let's import it. Now 
Now let's go ahead and load the scalar function. Now let's wait, transform the data. Now next we are initializing the number of clusters for k-means. Now as we got from the above two methods, optimal number of clusters is 3. So let's assign it to k-means. Now let's break the labels. Now let's find the unique clusters using the unique labels. And let's plot the graph of our clusters. And now let's add a title to our graph. And let's plot the legend. And as we can see from the graph, the model is able to classify the data points into separate classes. That brings us to the end of this video. Hope you got an idea of implementing k-means clustering on the IRS dataset. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you found this video useful. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.